In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use infrared technology in troubleshooting for air conditioning. And this would also work for heating as well as a couple of other things you can look at it with. But primarily in this one, we're going to talk about troubleshooting with air conditioning. Okay. Now, infrared technology uses a camera to see differences in temperatures. You can attach it to most tablets and phones, or you can purchase a separate camera. They're becoming more and more inexpensive, but in the long run, it can be well worth it because it will lead to better diagnostics and additional sales. It's easy to show the customer the problem rather than just discuss it and present a quote. What I'm using here is the IC camera, okay? I purchased it through one of the local supply houses. Um, it's just a small little handheld camera that attaches to my, in my case, it attaches to the iPad, also iPhone. Um, if you use it in an iPhone or iPad, you do have to take the protective case off or have an extension cable for that camera because for some reason it's not, the little pins aren't long enough, the connector isn't long enough to get around a case. Now, there are many of these out here. I am in no way specifically saying the iSeq is the best, okay? Um, where I'm basically going with it is just, is just what I'm using and what the pictures in this presentation are using. Okay, the, it uses an IC app that you can download from the App Store. You have to give it permissions to connect to the camera. So what the infrared is doing is it sees things that you and a regular camera can't. Okay, for example, on the picture on the left is a Nest thermostat. On the right, it's showing you the heat signature put off by the Nest thermostat. You'll notice that there's a little bit of heat coming off this thermostat on this side. Now, it makes sense because this thermostat has a digital display, and heat is generated anytime there's a, anytime some power is being used for something. Okay, but the rest of it, yeah, it's a little bit warmer than the other, than the surrounding wall, which is the cooler blue color. So again, when you're looking at colors, cool is blue, okay? And then as you go up on the color scale, it goes into reds and whites, okay? And the color scale's here on the left of the picture. Another example is a disconnect, okay? Disconnect hanging on the outside of the house, okay? Now, the interesting part about this picture is this up here isn't a problem. This is actually my cell phone laying on top here. So you can actually see the heat that a cell phone is putting off compared with the rest of it. Now, when we're looking at disconnects, there's a couple very important things to realize. Electrical circuit, in electrical circuit, heat means energy, voltage drops, and possible electrical problems. Electrical wiring operating properly should be roughly the same temperatures as surroundings. When you're looking at disconnects, such as the one in that prior slide, keep in mind some have surge protectors and other components inside of them that could generate a little bit of heat. In this case, this disconnect here has a surge protector inside of it. You can see the little capacitor down here at the bottom. Okay, so it is generating a little bit of heat just because of what's inside of it. And again, ignore my cell phone sitting on top here because cell phones, believe it or not, generate quite a lot of heat. Okay, line sets in air conditioning systems, okay, are another thing that we can use this for. Okay, the first picture is the condenser and you can actually, I always start with a picture on a regular camera and then take my infrared pictures because that way I can see what the, I can get a good idea of what the infrared is looking at. Okay, so in this case, we have our infra, we have our regular picture. You notice the line sets coming here. There's a filter dryer there, and we have our suction line. They're basically attached together. Okay, in this case, we have our system running. It's been running for about 10 minutes. You can actually see the fact that the liquid line is hot in this filter dryer. Okay, you can see the heat signature of the hot um, or the warmer liquid compared with the cold, cooler ground. And I won't say cold because it's Florida and it's already 75 degrees outside. Okay, but you can actually see the differences in the temperature 
up here where my mouse pointer is, you can actually see the coil. Okay, the condenser coil. Okay, this over right there, this little blue spot on the corner of the picture, this happens to be the connection where there's a shutoff valve, where that service valve is. Okay, that sticks up. So you can see that it's much colder than the surrounding area. Because refrigerants at low pressures boils off and absorbs heat from its surrounding, refrigerant leaks will always appear cold in infrared pictures. The easiest way to find a refrigerant leak in a condenser coil or an evaporator coil sometimes or line sets is to use infrared technology. You will spot that leak, okay, because it will show up as a big cold blob around the warmer environment. So one way to use infrared, use it for leak testing. It's pretty spot on a lot of times. We look at a condenser coil. Okay, again, we have the picture of the condenser. It's a relatively new condenser, so I'm not expecting any leaks in this. Okay, again, we can identify. You see the little symbol here, the little, it's the pain symbol. Okay, the manufacturer. When we look at the picture, that symbol is colder than the coil behind it. This system is running. Okay, that's why we have the heat signatures. Okay, you can see the heat signatures of the heat being dissipated. Same thing in this picture. Now this picture, the system was not running. Okay, this is the electrical compartment, which is a little bit warmer. But in this picture down here, the system was not running. In this picture up here, the system was running. Again, if you had a leak in this coil, you would have blue or even black wherever that leak is. Okay, if we put this into heat pump mode, this entire coil would be blue. Down here in this picture where it's not running, there's a concrete slab under this. This is pretty much cooler than the rest of the environment. Okay, again, we have a different angle of our condenser here. Okay, we now from the side, I'm getting two coil size. You can actually see the heat signature, and this is running, so we're blowing heat out of the top of this system. And you can see the yellows over here in the center here. This is the motor. Okay. Can take a little bit of a closer look down through the running fan. I can see, now see the compressor, and I can actually see the reversing valve here, and you can almost see the path of the refrigerant through this reversing valve, which is sort of neat. Okay, it's another thing you can check. You can see if a reversing valve is leaking internally because you would have hot refrigerant all the way through here. But, you know, I'm seeing a perfect that perfect U in that reversing valve, which is sort of neat. And again, if I had a leak here, any place in this system, I would be seeing where there should be reds. I would see, be seeing the dark blue and the blacks. By the way, the reason this is looking dark blue and black, again, I'm looking down into the condenser, and this bottom of this condenser is down on the ground. We can use it to check duct work, too, and air handlers, okay? Picture on the left is air handler with the cover on. Okay, picture on the right is my infrared with the system running. Okay, this is in a hot attic in Florida, but I'm a little concerned about this, about this blue right here because that tells me that this duct may have an insulation problem on the bottom, and I'm losing um, cooling. I'm losing some BTUs through the bottom of this um, flex duct. Okay, and this is a very tight attic, so I'm not able to get a very back view on this. Okay. Another situation of ductwork. Okay, we have our ductwork running all over here. I have a lot of blue. This is in Panama City after a hurricane. Okay, why am I looking at this? Because the in this case, I was doing an insurance claim, and the customer was saying, well, this one room is getting, is not, ever since the hurricane, is not getting, is not staying cool. They're not able to control the temperature. Well, the reality is when you look at the infrared pictures down here of the blues, okay, this is where there's the insulation actually blew itself out of the attic. So we need to re-insulate this. Okay, and that's where the problem is coming from a lot of the cools. 
Um, there's a little bit of duct leakage here that needs to be sealed, but again, not surprising. But again, you're looking for the difference between the hot and the cool. And this line across here, this this water line that runs across here, this is PEX. Okay, that's a cold water line. You can see it running perfectly across the picture. So it gives you some landmarks. These are the, you can see the studs and the joists up here. Okay, again, gives you landmarks. Those are my average attic temperatures. You can see the heat on the roof in the reds and whites. Okay, and that's missing ceiling, missing tiles on the roof, actually. Line set insulation is great to check with infrared. Okay, here's my line set running across the attic. Okay, air handlers back to the left, goes down the wall to the right. Well, we want to make sure our suction line is fully insulated because any leakage in the suction line insulation is going to allow moisture. And the last thing we want any place in a warm, humid environment is moisture. So we have my liquid line here that's showing up as the red because it, they're actually attached together. Okay, and right here where the, where the um, hanger is, okay, we actually have a leak in the insulation. This is not a leak in the line set. This is a leak in the insulation. Believe me, I went and looked. This is my own house. Okay, so the Armaflex has a hole in it right there, which is now taken care of. So again, infrared is a very fast way to do a quick system check looking for leaks. Okay, a lot of electricians are starting to use um, infrared with checking breaker panels, okay? Picture on the left is a picture of a breaker panel. Okay, now down here, there's a surge protector and there's a metering device down here, okay? An electron, a monitoring device, because this house has solar on it and they want to, and we want to see how much solar is being produced. So it's a, it's an internal meter, okay? So I have my red spot down here for the heat given off by this meter. I have a little bit of a warmer area because of the surge protection. And then I look up at the breakers, and I have two or three breakers in here that are a little bit warmer. Okay, one of them happens to be um, the solar panel breaker, and there's another couple breakers in here that are a little warmer. I'm going to have an electrician friend of mine check those eventually. Okay, but heat is not something we want in a breaker panel. Okay, so it's something we want to be aware of. This here is the door. It's a little bit warmer because there's sunlight and infrared coming in from an open garage door. Okay, this is a generator transfer switch, which again has some internal components to it, okay, that live behind the scenes. However, there's a really big warm spot right there, okay, in the center of this that may need to be checked, okay, because that's a little bit warmer than I'd like to see in an infrared. Okay, we have a sprinkler control down here. You can actually see it's a little bit warmer than the surrounding air. Okay, we can see our cables and we can see everything else. But stuff like that we want to check. Why do we use um, infrared? It's more complete diagnostics. Okay, it hones in on trouble spots faster. We can see possible electrical and refrigeration problems before they become severe. We can use it to show customers potential and actual problems. We can include with quotes and we can document before and after results.